Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Monday morning again. Start of another work week for us. And today being Monday, what mystery do we contemplate? Joyful. The joyful mysteries. Okay, so we continue with this series of the meditations on the Holy Rosary, the um, mysteries of the Rosary, and today it's going to be how many joyful mysteries, and the second. second is what we're going to meditate on today. Okay, the second joyful mystery, which is the visitation. The visitation, visitation. So what happened there? What happened there? Let's try to imagine. What do, we, what do we bear in mind? What do we imagine? What do we think about when we pray the second joyful mystery? So I would imagine a, uh, a, a long, long walk, long journey for Our Lady, who, upon hearing from the angel Gabriel that her cousin Elizabeth was also with child, was also pregnant, and um, and that she who was barren and in her old age uh, bore a son, okay, bore a child. Um, you know, you have to understand that during the days of our Lord and our Lady, there was no email, there was no Facebook, right? So news doesn't travel very fast. And this time, uh, Elizabeth had already been six months pregnant and our lady didn't know and it had to be and she's she's a cousin right it had to be the angel gabriel to send her the news right that uh, that her cousin elizabeth was pregnant and you know that's the way that's why the angel gabriel is also the uh patron saint of uh communicators yeah say communicators is because he was the one who announced the news to our lady and so Our Lady, what does Our Lady do? Our Lady just received the most awesome news, not so much about her cousin, but about herself, that she was to be the mother of God. And she just accepted her vocational calling with a generous fiat. Thy will be done. You see, she was just the recipient of the greatest gift that <laughs> that uh, that anybody could receive the gift of motherhood and not only that the gift of being the mother of God not just any kind of motherhood but the mother of the Messiah the one who was chosen to carry the Messiah into this world and deliver him into this world <laughs> that is such that is such a an awesome awesome piece of news that our lady had just received right and i the thing i would imagine our lady here doing is she sets aside that great news she she it, it was kind of like yeah thank you for for giving me all of these things but wait a minute, wait a minute. My cousin needs me. My cousin, Elizabeth, needs me. She's an older lady. She hasn't had a baby in the longest time. She's not gonna be prepared for this. She's not used to, 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 to tending to, to uh, a situation like this, right? And the first thing that Our Lady thinks about after thanking God for that great gift is I need to go I need to go I need to help my cousin I need to minister to her needs right that was the first instinct of Our Lady imagine uh, she had to journey I don't know how many days uh, by herself to the hill country she could have very well thought to herself, well, wait a minute, well, now I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. Now, now I'm going to have morning sickness. Now I'm going to have uh, some uh, uh, discomfort maybe and some uneasiness. And oh, I, I need to take care of myself. I, I cannot compromise the fact that I'm carrying the Son of God in my womb. And then, you know, something might happen to me in the journey. Or uh, I have to take care of myself. 
that kind of thought might have been a legitimate uh, thing to think about and, and, and really uh, a meritorious uh, thought that Our Lady, meritorious thought that Our Lady could have entertained, right? But no, Our Lady did not think that. Our Lady did not think of herself. Our Lady thought of her cousin Elizabeth who she knew needed her. <clears throat> But the spirit of service of Our Lady is a very, very important thing to, to understand about the second joyful mystery. Okay. And then, okay, so let's proceed. Our Lady goes through this journey alone, not even accompanied by St. Joseph. She goes alone. And when she reaches the house of Zachary and Elizabeth, what happens? <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Elizabeth also already knew that Mary was now the mother of God. And she blurts out into that song of praise, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Right? Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then the babies in their wombs, what happened? Huh? They leap for joy, right? St. John first was the one who leaped for joy. Wow, my cousin is here, right? Oh, my, my Savior is here. More than just my cousin, my Savior is here coming to visit me. Okay? Might have been such a joyful, joyful occasion for St. John, of course, St. Elizabeth. Okay? Uh, so it must have been a very joyful occasion for St. John to have met Jesus for the first time. And then what happens? Mary's humility. Our Lady's self-sacrifice. Our Lady's uh, you know, tendency to forget herself. Again, takes away the focus from herself after Elizabeth has blessed her and called her blessed of all women. Right? Our Lady parlays that kind of praise. And again, turns towards God and invites Elizabeth to, instead of praising herself, praise God for having looked kindly on her servant. And this is where Our Lady now expresses the beautiful prayer and song of the Magnificat. Okay? Magnificat, which is a very, very beautiful prayer and which is a prayer that we can pray many times uh, uh, to praise Our Lady. Okay? The beauty of the Magnificat. So, so then Our Lady spends three months, about three months with Elizabeth until John the Baptist was born. Okay? So imagine Our Lady forgetting about herself. Our Lady dismissing her own discomforts. Right? Our Lady uh, 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 um, you know, uh, not thinking about, oh, you know, my condition, you know, my morning sickness and my this and that. And no, she was there to serve her cousin Elizabeth. And Our Lady spends three months in the home of Zachary and Elizabeth in order to help her cousin. So we can emulate the example of Our Lady, the selfless example of Our Lady who is ready to serve those in need. Okay? So perhaps we have to think about the same thing. Are we ready all the time to serve the needs of the others? Right? And when we say others, the first object of our charity are siblings. your own siblings at home. Right? Your own family. Like Elizabeth ministered to her cousin who is family. Okay? So we have to remember that. All the time, the first object of our charity would be our family because charity begins at home. We cannot have charity towards others if we do not have charity towards our own family. Let us try to be like Our Lady and as we pray the second mystery of the Holy Rosary, let us imagine Our Lady okay? and remember Our Lady's selfless offering of herself 
to Elizabeth. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.